an engineer who got her start at Goddard and is no stranger to breaking records, logging the longest continuous space flight ever by a woman, your mission specialist, Christina Hammett Koch. He's a master of science in physics, an F-18 pilot, and a Canadian astronaut. Your mission specialist, Jeremy Hansen. He's a naval aviator and test pilot that's flown over 40 different aircraft, most recently the first operational commercial crew mission. Your Artemis II pilot, Victor Glover. He's a decorated naval aviator, test pilot, and leader of the highest character. Your Artemis II commander, Reed Wiseman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. Hey everybody, where's Wally here? Well, let's have another look at the offering by Level Earth Observer. Well, today he was looking at Victor Glover. Today we're going to meet 44-year-old Astro Dame Victor Glover. Victor apparently has been on the International Space Station for nearly three and a half months. And as we're about to see in a bit, Victor's kind of going to give the game away. He's not even aware of it, but he is with a little bit of help at the end from one of Victor's pals as well. Well, Victor, he's obviously well buff, and I think Adam is a tad green-eyed today. Not sure if it's Victor's guns or Camilla's smile that has Adam's desire. Anyway, i got to say, Victor, you're looking in good shape there, fella, for a 44-year-old. Okay, so it isn't Camilla then. Got it. Like he is, all muscular and healthy. Oh, Adam, there's a few other things I'd like you to know about Victor Glover. Did you know that he's been selected for the Artemis program? So he seems to be shortlisted, one of about 18 astronauts to go to the moon. So perhaps, follow me here, Adam, he's trying really hard to be able to go to the moon. So he might be like working out really hard. Mm, did you think of that? But I've actually got a photo that's going to bust you wide open here, mate. But I'm going to might save that right to the end. So stick around, folks. This is going to be fun again. Bearing in mind, when you're in your mid-40s, it's not easy to stay in shape and keep muscular and keep fit. It requires incredible discipline. You know, you're certainly a very fit guy, so are you dealing with any sort of muscular atrophy or anything being in zero gravity at this point? You know, uh, maybe, but I can't blame it on microgravity. Maybe it's because uh, my gym routine suffered a little bit prior to launch, just because we were so busy. Actually, now that I've been here on station for uh, about 45 days, I've had the opportunity every day. They protect time for me to go to the gym and, and work out, lift and cardio, and so or, or strength training and cardio. So I, I have no complaints, and I really enjoy exercising in microgravity. It's great. Oh, my goodness. So there's actually a gym on the International Space Station. 
It's great. We actually have a, it's called the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. It is a system that uses vacuum cylinders since weights wouldn't work up here. We have a, a cycle ergometer uh, so that we can do uh, spin type uh, of training. And then we also have a treadmill, uh, a very nice system. We wear a vest and it pulls us down to the to the treads and we can run. Uh, and it the, the three of those together uh, provide a great workout. Well, it just may be that Victor has a good workout ethic. After all, he's a bit of a gym junkie by the looks of him. And we all know that gym junkies love to work out. And I'm sure Victor has been giving the exercise machines a bit of a flogging. Let's have a look at Victor doing one set, shall we? Bear with me. Oh, that was a nice recovery at the end there too, Victor. That says a lot right there, doesn't it? Well, how well would you pull up after that workout, Adam? Oh, you need a little bit of Ventolin, do you? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. Well, let's have a look at what other bits of kit they have. Ergometer with vibration isolation uh, system, and that's uh, a lot like a stationary bike for an aerobic workout. Cycling? Well, that's cool. Jogging? Oh, Wolfie would love that. Uh, and as opposed to a treadmill at the gym where you just jump on and go, uh, the crew members uh, don a harness and... Wait, did she say astronauts put on a harness? And they tether themselves down to the treadmill uh, with a set of bungees or a subject load system. Oh, to run in space, yes. Okay, got it, that makes sense. Hey, what I found really interesting is just how Earth-based harnesses need to be designed to simulate running in space on Earth. This is what they actually look like. Wow, a little bit more complicated, isn't it? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. So remember I said I had this one photo that was going to bust you wide open, Adam? Well, follow me here. The logic goes like this. Because Victor is now on the ISS, and, and because, Adam, your theory is that he's actually put on buff condition on the ISS and he shouldn't have been able to. It's almost like Victor's been to a health spa. <laughs> well, my thinking is, well, what if he was actually buff before he went there? Did you think of that, Adam? And that just means all I had to do is pop into Google and type Victor Glover and find any image of Victor where he's on the ground, because, you know, he's not come back yet. You might be a little bit like a fricasseed duck then, mate. So here we go. Here it is. This was about line three of the images on Google search. Wasn't that hard to find, Adam. So maybe this not only shows that Victor was well buffed before he went up there, but it also shows that Adam sucks at doing research but we already knew that didn't we thanks adam it's been pleasure dealing with you yet again i'm really not getting tired of owning you adam thanks mate and just before we go let's get your pal the japanese fella to expose this nonsense even more so we got Nagushi hanging on wires giving the game away the spacex salesman himself now look at his back here see it Sticking up like that. <laughs> it's a fucking clown show. Well, it seems Sochi didn't take kindly to Adam's claims either, and he produced this slap fest for Adam. Adam, you might not understand Japanese, so here, let me translate this for you. Okay, a clown heavy plant operator thinks we hang around on wires because my short because my shirt bunched up a little bit. No gravity will do that. So, to those silly flat earthers, I will deliver a slap. For us to be on Earth and look like we are in zero G, we would need wires attached to our arms and everywhere else. We can move so easily in zero G. See, just float backwards. See, no harness. If I were wearing a wire, could I do this? Trouble with clothes in space is they fall up. Let me slip into something more comfortable. Be back in a jiff.
やってまいりました。This stripy number I really love. I, I just ignore those bits sticking out at the sides there. There isn't a harness connection at all. Here, let me straighten them out. Better, yes? I will Superman up again and change once more. Look, I have legs, like Cy Mandan doesn't. Whoa! Don't feel blue, Dan. But let me show you the next trick for those harness lovers. Let me put on this jacket and I will... Let me put on this jacket I prepared earlier. Jacket on, zipped up. This has a double slap for flatties. Flatties are a joke, hey. Enough flat, enough flat smacking. Bye bye all. Thank you, Sachi, that was brilliant. Adam, I just wanted to finish off with this one little final piece here. Um, when you had that bit of criticism of Sachi when he got out of the uh, crew capsule one, there was one thing that you didn't really look at. How about Kate's hair? Now, can you imagine how Kate's hair must be harnessed to make it do that? Well, I'm interested to see how you can figure that one out, mate. Until then, bye-bye and watch out for the socks. <laughs>